Hi, my name is Dr. Charity Armstead. I teach fashion at Bernal University in Gainesville, and I've been asked to come and speak to you guys about the fashion design process. So I've been sewing things since I was your age, and I liked doing it so well that I decided I wanted to do that for my career. So when I got to college, that's what I studied. If you enjoy doing this, you might want to look into that. <laughs> and I had so much fun with it in college, I went and got a master's degree. And then I got a PhD, so now I teach it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what fashion design is. First, let's talk a little bit about design. So all design exists to solve a problem or solve a challenge. And so when you're designing something, that is your first step is what's your challenge or what's your problem that you want to solve using this design. The problem could be something like, I need a swimsuit. I don't like the ones in the store. Let's make one that we like. Or it could be a problem that's, you know, um, maybe you are in a wheelchair and you want to make pants that will be more comfortable to wear when you're in a wheelchair. So we all know that you know, most jeans aren't super comfortable when you're sitting down. Um, or the problem can be more design oriented, maybe a little more aesthetic. Um, so kind of based on, well, let me show you. This is a dress I made that solved a design challenge. So the purpose of this dress, I made this just, you know, be a fun dressy dress and I wanted to make it. I thought it was would be pretty. But the challenge that I solved here was I wanted to take this stained glass window, which is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and it's a rectangle. I wanted to take this stained glass window and turn it into something that could be used for a garment. So one of the challenges I solved was I took the rectangular window and I made it into a circle <laughs> for the skirt. Um, so then I decided I wanted to pull it into a little bit of 3D. So I took some of the flowers that you see here. Um, I took some of the flowers in the design and I made fabric three-dimensional flowers that you can see in this design. And so that's one of the pieces that I did. Here's another one. This was also a kind of a, a problem that was a design-based problem. I really like this artist. His name is Dale Chihuly, and he makes art out of glass. And the first time I ever saw one of these, I was in a museum and I saw one of these big glass pieces that he made. I'm like, oh my goodness, that would make such a cool dress. And it took me a few years to do it, but I finally did. So I took a photograph of Chihuly's artwork and I made it into a print for fabric. And so I had some fabric printed and I made the dress. I decided that the shape of it should look like the glass. So this has a very round skirt. Now, then I also played with layers a little bit. I added some pleats here at the bodice as part of this. And then I thought, this still doesn't quite look like the glass. Let's see if we can do this another way. And do you see all these? These are called yo-yos, by the way. You take a circle, you gather around the edge and you make the edge real tight and it makes these little flower looking things. I thought these looked a lot like the glass. Um, so I decided I wanted to do yo-yos. So I went to the fabric store in Norcross. I bought a lot of different colors and I made all different sizes of yo-yos. And that took the two dimensional flat design here that you see in the skirt and made a three-dimensional version in fabric with these yo-yos. So that was a design challenge. Now, the next thing you need to think about, so we're solving our problem, and these two things are kind of related. The next thing that you want to think about is, who are you making this for? And all of you guys have different preferences on how you dress, right? So different people want to dress in different ways and want to say different things with their clothing. Your parents probably dress really differently to go to work than you dress to go to school, right? Um, and people want to communicate different things with their clothing. So, you know, maybe you're a big fan of UGA football. 
So you want a shirt that's got the UGA Bulldogs on it. But maybe your cousin lives in another state and likes a different football team. So who you're making things for really determines the design of it in a lot of different respects. People are different shapes, different sizes, they come from different cultures, and have different preferences. So we've got to think about who we're making it for. Now, when the, what we call this in the fashion industry is the target market. That's who are we making the garment for? And so we'll learn everything we can about the people that we're making things for and um, think about what colors do they like? What sizes do they wear? What's the weather where they live? And think about all of these different things so that we can design a garment that they'll want. So next, um, jot down on a piece of paper, who is your target market for this? Are you making it for a friend? What are they like? Are you making it for yourself? Are you planning to design something that everybody in the school would want to wear? And so these things are going to impact your design. So now we've got, hopefully we've got a problem to solve. We've got a target market. We know who we're solving the problem for. Then there are three aspects of design that we want to look at. So we're gonna work on explaining these. These were put together as an apparel design model, apparel is clothing. Um, basically it's a clothing design theory and we've got these three pieces to look at. So we think about our target market and we think about these three things. The first one is function. And this is basically like, does the garment work? Does it do what it's supposed to do? Well, what is the function? Well, this is going to be really different depending on what kind of garment we're talking about. So if you think about the function of a firefighter suit is going to be so different from the function of a wedding dress, right? Um, the function of a wedding dress, you know, mostly it's looks <laughs> and firefighters were trying to make sure that their bodies are protected from heat and flame and smoke. So we want to look at the function of what we're doing. Now, it's not just, you know, looking at the purpose of the garment. It's also, okay, um, can I get in and out of this garment? <laughs> Does it need a zipper or buttons? If this dress didn't have a zipper, I couldn't put it on and we don't really have any function, right? Or um, if we make a dress out of paper, <laughs> what happens when we go outside and it rains? Function's pretty much destroyed, right? So when you're looking at function, you've got to look at um, how you're making the garment, uh, what you're making it out of, um, does the garment fit your body? Um, you know, can you wear it? All of these things are related to function. So that's one of the three things as part of this theory. The second part is expression. So you want your clothing to be an expression of you and your values, right? Um, have you ever looked at something in the store and you think, eh, that just doesn't look like me. I don't want to wear that. That's the clothing that doesn't really express who you are very well. Different people want to express different things with their clothing. And um, this could be the way it looks or it could be bigger things like values. Maybe you want to make sure that the people who made your clothing are paid well and treated well. So you would want to look for fair trade clothing. Um, so that's one value. Maybe you want to make sure that your clothing is safe for the environment. So maybe if you're focusing on that, maybe you try to look for, um, you know, garments that are made of natural fibers that won't harm, um, that won't harm the environment once you eventually have to throw them out. Um, so there are a lot of different things you can think about with expressive. So values are one and then what something looks like. Um, so I made these dresses, they're colors that make me happy and a topic that I find interesting. So, you know, maybe you really like a particular sports team that goes under the aesthetic part of this project. Um, or maybe you really like cats. You guys probably just saw my cat run up the stairs a minute ago. Um, so maybe you want to make a garment that has cats on it. 
Um, so kind of looking at how this expresses who you are, it can often be a little bit different, especially when you're looking at clothing for grownups. Like some people might want to do a suit for a job interview and a suit would express like, oh, I know my job. I'm a professional. I'm an adult. I'm wearing the suit and I, I look good in the suit. Um, so that communicates professionalism and um, that you know how to be good at your job. Does it actually mean you're good at your job? Not necessarily, but your hope is that it will make other people think that. Um, so that is what we want to look at with expressive. How do we express who we are? And then we've got the third thing. The third piece that we're looking at is aesthetics. So we can have something that functions. Maybe it expresses some aspect of who we are. Um, but have you ever seen something in the store? Like maybe it's, I don't know, a sports team shirt, but you're like, eh, ugly shirt. It's, it's indicative of what I value, you know, the sports team. It works just fine, but the shirt's just kind of ugly. We want to make sure that whatever we're making works aesthetically. Basically, does it look good? So there are some different things that we can think about when looking at the aesthetics of a garment. Um, one thing that we'll look at, kind of like with these other categories, is we'll look at what are we making it out of? Is the look of the fabric appropriate to the look that we want for our end result? Um, we can also look at the way we design the garment, like um, does it look balanced, you know, um, or do we have like a long sleeve on one side and then a short sleeve on the other? It's going to kind of look unbalanced, you know, kind of put you off a little bit. So we want to make sure that the aesthetics look good. So some things that you'll look at with that, you'll want to look at balance. You want to look at color. Um, you want to look at scale. Does like the size of everything on it match itself? Does it work? Um, you know, if you've got a big shirt with a teeny tiny little decoration, it's going to be out of scale and not look so good. So you want to think about all the different aspects of the way something looks when you're designing the garment. And that's the third thing. So let's just kind of recap. And when you're working on your project, make sure that you know all of these things and that you're writing all this down. So first, we want to look at what is the problem or challenge that we're going to solve with our design. Second, who are we designing it for? Because that's going to determine all of our other answers. So then we're going to look at these three components, function, expression, and aesthetics. So we want to make sure the garment works, make sure the garment shows who we are and make sure that the garment looks good. So it was really good talking to all of you today. I hope this is helpful and I really look forward to seeing your garments. Um, I'm going to send my email address to your teachers. So if you have any questions for me or you want to show me what you design, I'd like to see it. So um, thank you and good luck with your projects. Bye.